But first this morning, well, it's one of our biggest local employers, but one also bogged down by regulations and red tape, the transport and trucking industry. This week in Mount Gambier, more than 60 local truckies and transport industry operators gathered for a forum to raise issues facing the industry and to seek answers from the heavy vehicle regulator. Chris Mellon is the CEO of the National Road Transport Association. G'day Chris, welcome to the program. Good morning Sam, thanks for having me. What were the main issues of concern raised? Yeah, there were three main issues. The one uh, concern that is right across the region and the delegates put to the NHVR was the apparent lengthy delays in receiving uh, consent to move heavy loads between the region. So you have to apply for a permit. And we're learning that these permits in some cases are not coming through um, up for up to four to six weeks. Now that is just amazing. Yeah, it would affect delivery time of your, of your freight and everything. Who's responsible for issuing them? It's actually at, uh, believe it or not, at three levels. It's with the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator. It's with the State Road Enforcement Agency. And now we've got local councils involved. And we've, we've identified the blockage is a new uh, piece of regulation which gives local councils up to 28 days to turn the permit around, whereas previously it, it would take no longer than 48 hours. So I think the workers in those council chambers are literally using the 28-day um, um, Yeah, to its full advantage, to I suppose, for them. Mm. And so that road, as a result, You with me, Chris? Hello? Yeah, lost you there for a sec, but you're back now. Excellent. So what we're going to now do is lobby uh, the federal government to remove the 28-day clause. It, it's ridiculous. Right. Okay. Uh, what about an, an education program for, for council? Yes. Look, the great thing about council we're learning is that they do want to be educated about the new law and also while the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator was in Mount Gambia, it was meeting with um, local council and explaining the new process. And in fact, we're finding that interstate as well. Um, they put some figures up on the board indicating that after they've had these meetings, they can actually see the turnaround times improving immensely. Mm. So that's really but how, how difficult does this make it for your members? Uh, if you've got to apply for permission to go through a particular area, and you've got to you know, apply for that, well, you're going to have to do this a fair way out from making the journey, aren't you? It's a very good point you raise. That's correct. So out of the forum the other night, the delegates were adamant that we should be setting up what we call pre-approved routes. So once a particular uh, road section has been approved for a B-double, for example, operators should not have to continue to be putting applications in. Once approved, it should be set in concrete, reduce the red tape and let's get those goods moving um, for the local region. Now you had reps from the Heavy Vehicles Regulator Office uh, attend. Yes. And now the regulator be became responsible earlier this year for administrating one set of national laws for heavy vehicles. Yes. Has that made life any easier? We're slowly getting there. The difficulty, Stan, with this reform, it's reliant on every state jurisdiction playing ball. Now, we've got a culture that is being, it's been very difficult to break through at that state level to, to get the states to let go, if you like. Mm. But we are seeing um, differences. We're seeing in other states um, the movement of goods between regions uh, with less red tape. The major issue, however, on top of permits is compliance and enforcement of the law. Uh, jurisdictions are interpreting it differently and we've got some overzealous enforcement officers in some cases picking on the most minuscule things and so the regulator's job is to tidy all that up. What's the future of your industry, do you think? How would you describe it? Extremely bright, very strong. The road freight task is expected to double within the next 20 years and this is why the industry's really... What's going to make that happen, Chris? Um, it's really important that uh, heavy vehicle national law reform succeeds. 
that's what will make it happen. If we don't, uh, 70% of the industry stand, there's 50,000 operators in the country. 70% only have one to two trucks. They're very small operators. So it will only happen if we reduce red tape and we reduce cost. All right. Now, I believe we've heard a lot about the free trade agreement between Australia and China and then other countries. What sort of an impact could that have on producers and, as a result, the transport industry? It could only have a positive impact. Um, we've seen the signature of those agreements since the G20. So that means for the Mount Gambier and the South East, if we're moving a lot more agricultural commodity out of the country, we need road transport operators to move that product to port. So it's really great news. Um, the supply chain is going to benefit immensely with these FTAs and we need to keep encouraging them. Now, just a few years ago, Chris, we were talking on this program and on many others as well, of course, about the fact that the average age of the, of the average truckie was uh, certainly over 50. Um, has that improved at all? And what, what can you do about making sure you've got a, a, a recruitment of young people? Yes, the, the National Road Transport Association, two years ago, we set up a youth forum, and this is for people under the age of 30 who either are currently in the industry or have an interest in working in the transport and logistics sector can start enrolling in Cert 2, 3 and 4s once they leave high school and take an interest and in an active involvement in either being a, a driver um, working in an administrative capacity but you are right the average age is still well over 50 and, and through initiatives like the Youth Forum we are trying to put the industry on the map in the eyes of, of, of our younger generation a lot sooner Alright, we wish you well Chris, thank you very much for your time this morning Thanks very much for having me Chris Mullum, who is the CEO of the National Road Transport Association, just winding up a very successful forum in Mount Gambia.